caught in a traffic jam can evoke emotions from boredom to road rage. Well, now there's ways to shave minutes off your commute without taking an alternate route. The Wall Street Journal's Michael Kosky tells us how the city of Los Angeles is using computer programs to eliminate gridlock. For many commuters, this is a typical weekday morning at a typically gridlocked intersection. But new technologies designed to reduce congestion may soon save you, the commuter, time and money. Such an amplification of capacity that is available from these technologies that we may actually see a dramatic improvement of, in level of service that sticks. This is just one of over 4,000 intersections in Los Angeles, now connected to a citywide network designed to adapt to changing traffic conditions. We gather all the information from the intersections, and then the central computer analyzes the information with the timing, and all the information is being processed. The system separates traffic into groups called platoons and adjusts the lights to minimize the delay the vehicles encounter. Say, in the previous cycle we, we running, we say, well, we only need 20 seconds, but a platoon coming towards that intersection it's bigger than what the 20 second handle, so we can increase the 20 second from 20 to 21 or 25. Signals further ahead then adjust their synchronization so they turn green just as the platoon approaches, rather than based on the speed limit of the road. Compared to other cities in North America and in fact worldwide, they really have been technical leaders in the deployment of advanced traffic control systems. The result? The city says its roads can now handle 16% more cars. And on the highways, other technologies have been developed. Like this toll that measures traffic and updates prices to reflect congestion. When the road gets busier, the cost of driving on it becomes more expensive. The trips that don't have to take place right now uh, can be managed out of existence. They can be taken off the guideway when it's most expensive for the trip to be there. And that's a win for everybody. Uh, the people who choose to make the trip later are not losers. They're still making the trip. Uh, the people for whom the trip right now is very important are still out there on the road. And they're getting a better, better level of service, so they're winners. Further into the future, Dr. Moore envisions a time when driverless cars rule the road, choosing their own routes. So as we give up control of the route, that we're going to choose to get to a given destination, and all we're really left with is the choice of the destination, uh, there will be options for paying for faster access. And eventually, such autonomous vehicles may make traffic signals obsolete. We might well encounter traffic lights only in museums. Uh, how we manage flows at intersections could change quite a bit. Right now, the idea of providing an exclusive right of way to a discrete movement, that could become a thing of the past but we really have to have every vehicle involved in the flow under centralized control to be able to do that. Back in present day LA, even after the upgrades, residents still refer to delays with post-apocalyptic names like Carmageddon. If you really want to avoid sitting behind the wheel for extended periods of time, you might follow the lead of the city's senior traffic engineer, George Chen. I normally take public transit. For the Wall Street Journal, I'm Michael Kofsky.